Welcome back to The Good Life Journey, where we discuss topics related to personal finance and happiness. In today's video, we're assessing five different strategies for budgeting. Budgeting is an extremely important tool that can enable us to manage our money effectively and can provide a critical instrument to support us on our journey towards achieving financial independence. The simple idea behind reaching financial independence is to save and invest as much money as possible so that eventually we can live off those investments without having to depend on personal employment. But before jumping into the different forms that budgeting can take, and I'll certainly let you know at the end of the video which one I personally prefer, it's useful, I think, to review some of the important functions of budgeting. So first of all, planning. Budgets can allow you to plan by estimating income and expenses. They provide a clear picture of where money comes from and where it goes, and can therefore provide control over our finances. Two, prioritization. When creating a budget, you can allocate funds to different areas based on their importance. This can help to identify needs versus wants, ensuring that essential expenses are covered before discretionary spending. Three, financial awareness. Creating a budget involves reviewing periodically income sources and tracking expenses. This process itself raises awareness about our spending habits and patterns and can help us to identify areas where adjustments may be needed. Four, goal setting. Budgets provide a framework to work toward our financial goals. For example, saving for a vacation, buying a house, or investing for retirement. Five, emergency preparedness. Emergency funds are part of a well-planned budget and can ensure we manage unexpected expenses or emergencies. Six, debt management. Budgets can help us prioritize the allocation of funds for debt repayment. They can also prevent the accumulation of additional debt in the first place by highlighting areas where spending can be reduced or eliminated. And seven, decision making. Budgets can provide us with valuable data insights for making financial decisions. For example, considering a major purchase or evaluating an investment opportunity. All right, now that we've covered the important functions of budgeting, let's go over five different types of budgets that are quite common to, so that you can better understand which may be more appropriate to your situation. All right, we're gonna start out with the first one, which is traditional budgeting. And please feel free to stop the video at any moment and kind of like review the examples that I'm providing so you can better understand it in detail. Traditional budgeting is basically, it's allocating fixed amounts to various expense categories based on income and financial goals. So one of the pros is that, yeah, it's a clear allocation of funds and it helps to plan for expenses and savings. And the cons, it could be that perhaps it doesn't accommodate unexpected expenses or changes in income. And in relation to financial independence, I feel that, I mean, although it does provide a, a straightforward and structured approach with dealing with expenses, this method is implicitly assuming that savings are what's left over after all the expenses have been covered. So it's a much more passive way of saving and may not encourage um, explicitly intentional saving habits. Okay, we move on to the second one, which is envelope budgeting. It's literally dividing cash into envelopes for specific spending categories, and the, uh, the whole purpose is to control spending. Um, and it's, uh, today in its online version, you could have like different sub-accounts within your bank account that can actually act as like virtual envelopes that are designed for a specific purpose. So emergency funds, vacation, home expenses, etc. Some of the, the pros would be that it's a very tangible approach to spending control. And this would be kind of a suitable method, I think, for very total beginners or people who have really a rough time controlling what, they, what they're spending. Some of the cons are, of course, it's a bit inconvenient in a digital payment era, and it may not be suitable for all expenses. In relation to financial independence, it does provide control over discretionary spending. So it indirectly does, does would support financial achieving or pursuing financial independence. But it's also, I find, a relatively passive approach to saving and doesn't necessarily encourage intentional saving habits. Okay, and we move to our third type of budgeting, which is called the 50-30-20 budgeting. It's a technique that's often attributed to Senator Elizabeth Warren. Uh, it allocates 50% of net income to needs, 30% to wants, and 20% to savings or to debt repayment. So as a pro, um, it's a simple guideline to be able to 
balance expenses and it does encourage savings and debt reduction. It may be a good approach for someone wanting to order very chaotic uh, spending habits uh, and to help them especially distinguish between needs and wants. As a con, it really is a fairly rigid approach and it may not be suited to everybody's financial situation and goals. Uh, in relation to its alignment with achieving or pursuing financial independence, it does encourage a significant allocation to savings, but it may not be well suited to those who want to be more aggressive. And just to give an overview, it would roughly take you 25 years to reach financial independence if you have a 20% savings rate. Number four is zero-based budgeting. It's a technique that assigns every single dollar of income to a specific expense, savings or investment, and ensures that income minus expenses equals zero. Pros, it does encourage intentional spending. It allocates fully income and it prioritizes savings. In relation to cons, it's a time-consuming approach and it, it can require diligent tracking. In relation to its alignment with pursuing financial independence, uh, this method does emphasize deliberate saving and investing decisions. And so it directly would support pursuing financial independence. And five, pay yourself first budget. This technique prioritizes saving or investing a fixed amount immediately upon income receipt. So the pro is that it ensures savings before the, the spending has even begun. So it definitely fosters good uh, savings habits. Uh, in cons, maybe that it requires, it may require adjusting other expenses to accommodate for these savings. And in relation to its alignment with financial independence, it does strongly align because it prioritizes savings or investment, uh, directly supporting the journey towards financial independence. It facilitates tracking a predetermined savings amount. So aiding in understanding and maintaining a savings rate. All right, as we've seen, these different budgeting techniques cater to different financial goals and to perhaps to different personal preferences. Although every method has its pros and cons, to pursue financial independence, I would personally prefer number five, a pay yourself first budget, and to use it in combination with a zero-based budget. By using a pay yourself budget, we're giving the highest importance and priority to our savings and to our saving goals. But, and by sticking to a, a zero-based budget, so method number four, we're also following the principles of allocating to every single dollar a specific purpose. And we've made it to the end of the video. Please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and to subscribe if you found value in today's video. Also check out our channel's content where we discuss topics related to personal finance and happiness. So everything ranging from how to achieve uh, financial independence all the way to insights from uh, philosophers, writers and thinkers on how to lead the best possible life. Thank you very much. Take care. Good luck. And I hope to see you in the next video.